Hello and welcome. My name is Alaria Thompson and today I'll be talking to you about the fixed declining balance function in Microsoft Excel. The fixed declining balance formula is a financial function in Excel and that can be found by going up here into the formula bar under the financial section and then going down to DB, which is what it's signified by. The fixed part pertains to the rate at which the depreciation is applied. Instead of evenly spreading the cost out over the life of the asset, a fixed rate is applied each period, making the amount of depreciation decrease over time. For example, if the original cost is $100 and the rate is 25%, the first year depreciation would be $25. The second year would be 25% of $75 or $18.75 and so on. I set up four examples to go through detailing how the fixed declining balance function can be used. In this case, looking at Big Rig Incorporated's recent purchases. So I'll go ahead and read this first example here. Big Rig Incorporated has just purchased a large yacht to add to its current fleet of massive water vessels. The purchase price agreed upon is $8,495,000, and after using it for its full life of 35 years, the yacht will have a salvage value of $1,000. They need to figure out how much depreciation to record for the first year using the fixed declining balance method. So we can go ahead and do the formula, signified by DB. And now we'll get to our arguments. The first and required argument is cost, and this is the original purchase cost of the asset. So for our example, that's 8495000 Our next argument is salvage, and this is also required. And this is the value that is left after all depreciation has been recorded. So what you could sell it for at the end of its useful life. And that would be $1,000 for our example here. The next argument is life, and this is also required. And this is the amount of periods that the asset will be depreciated over, which is also called its useful life. In this case, our yacht is useful for 35 years, so we're going to put 35 in there and go to our next argument, which is period. This is also required, and it's the period in which you are recording the depreciation. It has to be in the same units as life. So for example, our life is in years, so our period will have to be in years the same way as if it was in months, our period would have to be in months. So we're just recording it for the first year or the first period, so we'll put a 1 in there. And we'll get to our last argument, which is month. This is optional. And the units are in months, even if the life and the period are in years, like in our example. It's used if you would want to find the amount of depreciation at the fifth month of the year. And if month is not used, then it's assumed to be 12, which is the last month of the year. So we're going to go ahead and put in 12 for just the last month of the year. And our depreciation for the first year is figured to be $1,936,860. Now, in case we wanted to go in here and see if how that would change, if we take out the 12-month part, we come up with the same answer. So now we'll go on to our second example, where the CEO of Big Rig Incorporated decides that he wants to use the large yacht as his personal mode of transportation. So the useful life of the yacht is changed to 25 years, and the salvage value decreases to $500. What is the new amount of depreciation that should be recorded for the first year? So we're going to be ch um, changing a couple of the arguments here. Go ahead and put in the formula. Our cost will stay the same. Our salvage value decreases to 500 our useful life is 25 years, because we're assuming that he's going to get a lot of wear and tear for that, so it's not projected to last as long. And since our life is in years, our period is in years as well, and that's the first one for the first year, we're going to go in and put the 12 at the end. So as you can see, the depreciation has increased significantly from the first to the second example to $2,743,885. And this is in part to um, the change in amount of time that the asset is depreciated over. Since it's a shorter amount of time, then more depreciation has to be taken care of each year. We'll go on to our third example. Now, 
what if we wanted to find out how much appreciation would be recorded in, say, the 12th year of the yacht's useful life? Now we're going to use the same information that we used for our second example here with the decreased salvage value and the um, useful life. The cost will stay the same. Our, our life is going to be uh, 25 years. The period is now going to change to 12 because it's in the 12th period or the 12th year. And we'll go ahead and put 12 at the end for the last month of depreciation. So here, our year 12 depreciation would be $37,570.01. And you can see how much of a difference it goes between year 1 and year 12 of this asset. We went from over $2.5 million to just 37000 And this is from the fact that the rate stays the same, but as the years go on, the cost is decreased, and so there's less depreciation recorded each year. On to our last example here. Big Rig Incorporated will be purchasing a new boat lift for its boathouse to accommodate the expanding fleet. They will be using the fixed declining balance method to record depreciation for the new asset. The purchase price of the boat lift is $20,000 and it will be depreciated over a life of 22 years. At the end of the 22 years, the lift will have a value of $1,000. What will be the depreciation that Big Rig Incorporated accumulates for the boat lift's first six months of use? So although depreciation is usually recorded at the end of the year, we're going to try and see how much is um, being taken out for the first six months of use. We'll go ahead and put our formula in here. Now the cost changes here to the 20000 significantly less for a boat lift than a yacht. The salvage value is $1,000. The life here is 22 years. In our period, this is where the tricky part is because since we're only looking for the six months, we have to keep the period and the life the same um, unit. And so we'll put the period in as the first year but then we'll put in the optional month argument as six. So it's the sixth month of the first period. And with that, we get $1,270 of depreciation for the first year, which is significantly less than we recorded for the first year depreciation of the yacht. Um, now, this is only at the six months. So we want to see maybe um, what it would be for the full year of depreciation and we'll just take out that six month part at the end. And we'll see that for the course of the full year, it increases to $2,540. Now, let's see if this is actually working. What, what about the, um, the second year of depreciation? We can go and put two for the second period. And we can see that it has, in fact, decreased from the first year to the second year. And that's all I have for you. I hope that you learned something new today, and thank you for listening.